While reviewers continue to praise that QD OLED is brighter than existing white OLED and has excellent color expression, LG Display made a meaningful announcement just a few days ago. It is about considering the application of micro lenses that can increase luminance by 20% to white OLED TV. And it was announced that the introduction could be promoted as early as this year. White OLED already increases the brightness of the TV panel by 30% by introducing a material substituted with deuterium, which has excellent durability. How does the micro lens increase the brightness by 20% again? Is it a fake news? No. It just wasn't applying the technology that was already feasible. The reason is that the application was delayed due to the increase in production price, and then the response was started with the advent of QD OLED with high brightness. Today we will look at what it is and how it is possible. Now, let's go on a tech trip. It may be a bit unfamiliar to us, but when electricity is applied to an OLED device to emit light, only less than 20% of the light generated inside the device escapes the device and is emitted to the outside, and the remaining 80% or more is converted into heat inside the device. It is a sad situation that most of the generated light does not escape and only some is being used to see the display. Let's see the phenomenon in animation. Here's an OLED device. To understand conceptually, only the light-emitting layer of OLED where light is generated is shown, excluding electrodes or parts. Let's see what happens to the light generated inside the device. Assuming that light is generated at any one point in the device, the generated light spreads out in all directions, and only a part of it exits the glass substrate. The rest bounces back within the glass substrate and is all absorbed and turned into heat. This is exactly what is happening with the OLED TVs we are seeing. In other words, only a portion of the light generated by the OLED device can escape to the air layer is shown in yellow, and the remainder is continuously reflected inside the device is shown in red. The cause is the refraction of light, which we already learned in middle and high school. Among the various refraction phenomena, let's try to remember what happens when light travels from a material with a high refractive index to a material with a low refractive index. The reason is the difference between the refractive index of where the light is generated and the refractive index of the layer of air that the light encounters as it exits. The refractive index of the organic layer where light is generated inside the OLED device is about 1.7 and air is 1. This is because when light generated by a material with a high refractive index enters the layer of air with a low refractive index, only part of it escapes. In other words, the light whose propagation direction is close to the vertical direction of the interface between the high refractive material and the low refractive material escapes into the air, and the light that is close to the horizontal is trapped inside. More precisely, only light within the critical angle is emitted into the air and the ratio of light emitted into the air among optically generated light is 1 over 2 n square, where n is the refractive index of the material from which the light is generated. Therefore, if 1.7, which is the refractive index of the organic light emitting layer material, is substituted for n, it means that only about 17% is emitted to the outside. Now we know why only a fraction of the generated light is emitted out of the device. So, how to solve this? The simplest method is to make the interface and the direction of light perpendicular to each other when light passes through the luminescent material and meets the air layer. That's right. If we simulate it with animation, it is as follows. Let's take a look. When a hemispherical lens is placed on the device, the light generated from the device travels in all directions, but when it enters the air layer, it always travels in the direction perpendicular to the interface between the air and the light emitting layer. If so, what will happen if these technologies are applied to OLED TVs without modification? That's right. We have no choice but to make a bigger TV than the CRT TV of the past. Therefore, the practical way to let more light out into the air while maintaining the ultra-thin characteristics of OLED TV is to use a micro lens. Of course, it is less efficient than using a giant lens, but it is the most practical way to increase the screen brightness without increasing the thickness of the TV. 
and in the papers and patents, numerous methods to increase the efficiency using microlenses are published. And, although not well known, Samsung's Galaxy Note 20 Ultra already has this technology. Inside the display, the previously described microlenses have already been used, which serves to enhance the brightness of the display. It is not known exactly which method LG display used among them, but it is seen that a more practical method was chosen rather than a more difficult method as it only increased efficiency by 20%. Samsung, using the QD OLED method, put its strength in providing a brighter screen compared to white OLED, but the advantages of Samsung QD OLED's high brightness will soon be nullified by the simultaneous application of LGD's deuterium-substituted material and microlens technology. The use of microlenses also improves viewing angles, so it is expected that those advantages will also be negated. All that remains is the high color gamut that can be achieved by using quantum dots. How will Samsung respond to these issues? We will end today's video while anticipating what Samsung's response to this movement of LG display will be. Goodbye.